Ezekiel chapter number 36. I'm going to be again reading in verse number 33. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all of your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and, in, and the waste shall be builded. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and the desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem. In her solemn feasts, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, as we come to you now, we realize that many of your people have labored in this world this week. Many have worked today. Lord, they're tired in body. Their minds are worn out from uh, being in traffic and having to deal with pressure and dealing with life. And, Father, we realize, uh, added to that, the devil has, has tried to discourage and distract and try to take away the joy and the help they got from revival last week, uh, trying to keep their focus off everything but revival coming next week. Uh, and so, Father, we need your help tonight. Father, we ask that, Lord, you'd sit down amongst us, you'd stir in our midst, uh, you'd speak to hearts, you'd grant victory, you'd grant strength, you'd grant help. And Lord, uh, I pray that people would quit looking within they quit looking around. Lord, they'd learn to look up. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, God, I pray that you'd help us now the next few minutes as we looked into the perfect law of liberty. Lord, to find sustenance for our soul, to find strength, uh, Lord, for our valleys. Uh, and Lord, to find, uh, uh, Lord, peace that we can think on and good report that we can think on. Uh, and virtue that we can think on that, Lord, uh, will equip us and prepare us for what you have in store for us uh, in the days to come. Uh, Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing down there at Victory uh, in Owenton. God, continue to bless there. Uh, bless your churches that are assembled across this land. Uh, God, send revival these days. Uh, Father, we certainly pray for the saints of God tonight. Lord, you'd help them and sustain them. And certainly if there are any amongst us unsaved, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God uh, would convict them of their sin uh, and draw them unto thee for repentance. Uh, Father, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do, for it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel is a prophetic book. Israel is in captivity. Israel had rejected the plead, the pleadings of God. God oft be times, the Bible said, sent unto her uh, his messengers uh, who preached, who preached, who preached, uh, and they stoned them, they mocked them, uh, uh, they ignored them. Uh, uh, Jeremiah preached to them, uh, they better repent uh, or they would perish. Uh, and often they mocked him and they laughed at him. Uh, and uh, finally God said, enough is enough. Uh, and friend, you listen to me, listen to me well. Uh, God will let you uh, 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 mess with him for a little while, but in his long suffering, uh, in his tender 
mercy and his loving kindness. He'll give you a space of grace. But there will come a time when God says enough is enough and the hammer will fall. And it did fall on Israel. Israel was destroyed. The walls of the city was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. And the people that were left after the invasion were carried away into Babylon. And there they were served as slaves in a foreign land. They hung their harps on the willows. They no longer had a song of praise. They no longer could worship the Lord. And they were in a place of desolation. And here we find that God sends word through another prophet. What he's going to do when he recovers them, Brother Bob, out of Babylon. Now I want you to notice... And before I get into the thoughts of the verses we read, that I find in the verses around where we read a threefold work of the Holy Spirit. I find, first of all, there is the spirit of regeneration. Look at verse 26. The Bible says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, uh, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, uh, and I will give uh, you an heart of flesh. Uh, is that not what the Lord Jesus done for us when we got born again? Uh, did he not uh, give us a new heart? Uh, did he not put his spirit within us? Uh, did he not change us for all of time and eternity? Uh, isn't it wonderful the sweet Holy Ghost of God uh, indwelled us uh, after he drew us to God? Uh, uh, he gave us the spirit of regeneration. Uh, he gave us a new birth uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the second work I see uh, of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of righteousness. Look at verse 27. Uh, and I will put my spirit within you uh, and cause you to walk in my statutes uh, and ye shall keep my judgments uh, and do them. Uh, uh, can I say not only did he save us uh, through the spirit of regeneration, uh, but he gives us the spirit of righteousness. Uh, uh, the reason, Miss Mary, a lot of people can come to church for a little while uh, and then just quit, uh, say it didn't work for them, uh, uh, because a lost person cannot live a Christian life. Uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the flesh is weak. Uh, the flesh cannot live a righteous life. Uh, it takes you being born again uh, and the Spirit of God living through you. Uh, and then you're subject to fail the grace of God. Uh, but hey, uh, the Spirit of God bids you to walk circumspectly. Uh, the Spirit of God bids you uh, uh, to live a righteous life, uh, to do right, to live right, to be what the Lord would have you to be. Uh, i got a real problem with folks, Brother Ray, that sit under preaching week in, week out, uh, and uh, 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 this pre uh, the preaching is done, uh, and they choose to live however they want to uh, and think God is pleased with it. Mm, no, He's not. Mm. You'll either conform to what God says, or you'll have to deal with God over it. But I'm convinced, Miss Cinda, the reason a lot of folks never change, they don't know Him. The Lord don't let me live however I want to. Oh, I make my choices, but I got to pay for them. But all the way of making a bad choice, the Holy Ghost is telling me, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I wonder about folks when there's a lot of preaching done on faithfulness and they're not faithful and they act like it's no big deal. Hmm. Just might not know Him. Huh? I wonder about folks when you preach on how you're to live and how you're to walk and how you're to conduct yourself and they don't care. They're going to do it their way. They just might not know Him. Hmm? Listen, the church is a great place to hide out. There's a lot of people here. And can I say, Jesus made it real clear that uh, uh, Satan sowed tares among the wheat. He made it real clear that there's uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. There's a lot of folks, I believe, uh, 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 Miss Crystal, that think they're okay because they come to church. But if all you do is get to church, you're not okay. You've got to get to Christ. He changes you. Well, I'm not preaching on that tonight. I'm just kind of giving you a little thought here. I talked about the threefold work of the Holy Ghost. There's the spirit of regeneration, the spirit of righteousness. But what I want to deal with is the spirit of revival. 
Look in chapter 37, verse number 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Matter of fact, the Bible goes on saying, Lo, they were very dry. And they were dry bones. There was no life. But God raised them up as a mighty army, put sinews on them, put flesh on them. Uh, and he, Brother Greg brought it out. He blew from the four winds and uh, 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 put breath in them. And they rose up. They that were dead and dry became alive. The spirit of revival. Amen. Now look at our text. I want you to notice a few things that revival brings. When there's revival, it brings a few things. And we find it in the verses we read. First of all, it brings forgiveness. Look in verse 33. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be built. Uh, can I say, Israel went into captivity because they disobeyed God. Amen. But there came a po point when God said, uh, I'll forgive your iniquities. Can I say, revival always brings forgiveness. The reason we need revival is because we're not where we should be with the Lord. But when we seek Him and hunger for Him and thirst after Him, uh, and He speaks to our hearts and we repent toward Him, because without repentance you'll never have revival. But when you repent, there's forgiveness. And I just want you to understand that He said that He would bring them uh, to the... Mm, Dwell in the cities where the waste shall be built. Well, he's talking about waste. All the cities, all that was left, Brother Clint, was just waste. It was just rubble. Nobody certainly would have lived there. But that was their homeland. There was forgiveness. Revival always brings forgiveness. Can I say, revival always brings folks to a point where their fallow ground is broken up. Look at verse 34. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. I was out by the sign today looking, because they came out and fixed it, and so do grass seed. Brother Ray, I don't think we're going to get any grass there. But I was looking at a lot of the land out there, and we've been without much rain here the last month, and it's all becoming cracked out there. It's dry, and it's all just in bad shape. But we're not going to get any grass seed out there till we till it up and we sow some good seed. Hmm? You see, what happens when time goes on and there's a lack of revival in our hearts and in our churches, we get dry. Amen. And then we get hard. And then we come to church and the preacher can preach on, oh, how I love Jesus, and it just bounces off of us because we're hard. It doesn't penetrate. Hosea said this in chapter number 10, verse number 12, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Uh, we're looking for some spiritual rain. Uh, uh, we had a little taste of it last week, uh, but I'm looking for a flood, my dear friends. Uh, a little shower's a blessing, uh, uh, but I want more than a shower. Uh, I want to get to where I can swim in it for a little while, uh, uh, where the blessings of God overflow us, uh, and it gets out into the community, and others see the greatness of God. Uh, and revival not only brings forgiveness, it brings a breaking of the fallow ground. Mm -hmm. Some got a little broken last week. That's a blessing. Got news for you. You don't have a halo yet. We haven't arrived. Mm -hmm. Can I say something else about revival? Revival brings fruit. Look at verse number 35. The Bible says, and they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. Hmm? You, there'll be an evidence that God's been there and there'll be fruit hallelujah that we saw five precious souls saved uh, last week uh, uh, that's uh, uh, some wonderful fruit uh, 
But can I say, uh, there was a lot of other fruit that uh, happened last week. Uh, folks that have, hadn't been broken in a long time were broken. Uh, folks that you never hear testify, testify. Uh, uh, folks, uh, when they sang uh, in days gone by, they just sang. But last week they sang and had a touch on it. Uh, uh, you say, what happened? Uh, uh, folks that used to be interested in things that was going on in the world got interested in the things going on with Jesus. Uh, and it was evident uh, uh, there'll be fruit when revival breaks out uh, thought about this revival also brings focus now I've told you in years gone by what revival really is is putting everything back in spiritual focus because we get out of focus hmm? it's like me trying to read that verse without my glasses not going to happen it's not in focus now maybe if Brother Ray brought me that 12 foot ladder I could probably see it but I have to put these on for it to be in focus revival puts things back in spiritual focus but I'm not talking about that kind of focus because you're already there if you're starting to see fallow ground getting broken up and forgiveness is taking place and, and you're starting to see fruit the spirit of revival is upon you. I'm not talking about our focus. Bless God, if you was here last week, you, you knew where the focus was. Uh, mm, but look at the focus in verse 36. Then the heathen hmm, that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. Now I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. That's the focus I'm looking for. That's why I can tell you we haven't arrived yet. The heathen aren't coming by and saying, hey, what's going on around here? Hmm? The neighbors over here aren't beating down our doors saying, what's going on in there? Now, Brother Ray and I was here today, and we did have a FedEx driver stop by. Uh, he was a new guy. He didn't know that he could turn around back in the back. He was afraid he couldn't get his truck in. He'd have to back out, so he parked in the neighborhood next to us, walked over here. I'm thinking, this guy's got problems. That's what I'm thinking, Brother Jack. Huh? I mean, Lord have mercy, we're church. Well, you think we don't have any parking spaces? Huh? But anyway, he come in, and he, and he, and he, he was about three sheets to the wind because he was out of breath from walking about four miles, and he brought the package and he got to talking. You want to know what our service times were. And if, when we had church. And, and you know we have it on Wednesday nights. So I'm off on Wednesday nights. Maybe I can get my kids and come. Uh, and, and he said we used to go to church. I need to get back in church. He said what kind of church is this? I'm thinking you just read the label. Emmanuel Baptist Church. But I didn't say anything. Uh, I said we're a Baptist church. He said well where do we go? It's a Baptist church. Uh, he said well maybe I'll just come. Huh? Brother Ray said, come revival next week, huh? What I'm saying is, I want folks to stop by and say, what's going on around here? You see, when real revival happens, there'll be focus from the heathen that something is going on down there at the house of God. And then revival also brings more to the flock. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, in her solemn feast. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. Hmm? You see, when real revival breaks out, People come from all over to find out about it. And then they get born again and never leave. Amen. I've been reading about revival all week. And I've read some interesting things about when revival was real. And how people were drawn to come to the house of God to pray. And they thought they'd get there and be by the, themselves. Only get there and there'd be a great number. They couldn't even fit in the building. They were all drawn to pray. I'm talking no social media, no telephones, no TV, no radio, but they all ended up there to pray. Who do you think drew them? 
That's why I told you to turn your social media off, turn your news off, turn because the Lord's trying to speak to you and you aren't getting the message. Hmm? I'm interested in verse 37. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God. Now, he said that several times in our reading, and whenever God says, I'm saying something, we need to pay attention. He said this, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. I'm interested in that little phrase, yet for this. And I want to preach with God's help on yet for this. You see, often... When Israel was invaded, and when Israel was overthrown, and when Israel was carried off into captivity, they cried out to God, Oh God, forgive us, we now get the message. Oh God, uh, uh, save us. Oh God, uh, let us go back to our homeland. For 70 years, he wouldn't even hear their prayers. Amen. He sent his messengers, but they ignored them. So now God's letting them reap what they sowed. They ignored him. He's ignoring them. That's why you need to be real sensitive when God speaks. You better do what God says. Because there's coming a time when you're going to need him. And if you're not concerned about him and his house, he just may not be concerned about you and your house. For 70 years they've sought after God. He wouldn't even hear their prayers. But in verse 37... He says this, I will yet for this be inquired of. In other words, he's saying, for what I've just promised, yet for this, I will now listen to their prayers. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, I want to preach on yet for this. Can I say, if we're going to have true revival, and I believe that yet for this, this time, I mean, we've been faithful. We've been preaching the Bible here for 20, almost 21 years. We've been singing the praises of Jesus ever since I've been here, and this church has been doing it long before I got here. We have prayed. We've went out in the neighborhoods. We've done a lot of things, but we haven't seen true revival. Brother Bob, maybe yet for this. Maybe God is ready to listen to see how serious we really are. Mm -hmm. Yet for this. Boy, we had a wonderful week last week. Now, and who's tell, and who, no telling what he's going to do this coming week. Amen. Hmm? It'll either take us to higher plateaus or we'll bottom out be in worse shape than we were before last week. Right. Hmm? You see, God rained manna down on them in the wilderness. True. But if they got lazy and took it for granted, they went out to pick it up and, and, and they stored it up for a couple of days, it'd breed worms and stink. Amen. That's what we'll become. If we don't quit, if we don't keep on putting God first, it amazes me. I've already seen some lose some zeal. Haven't even made it out a week. Yeah. And some of you, the revival's already, you know, turned off in your heart. I noticed Sunday there were some that hadn't even been turned on. And they got so much they didn't even have to come back Sunday night or tonight. I don't understand it. I just, I just do not understand it. Amen. Bless God, Brother Phil, they showed up to vote on Tuesday, sure. but they can't come out and see what the Lord has for them. Amen, I got good news for you. I'd rather have Jesus on my side than all the politicians in the world. Sure. Hmm? But let me give you some thoughts about what it's going to take to have true revival for yet for this. For this week coming up, what's it going to take? And I say, first of all, it's going to take fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. Did not he said yet for this, I, uh, if, uh, he said, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. God said, I am ready to listen to prayer that will be offered. Can I say, it's not those now I lay me down to sleep prayers. It's not one of those uh, shopping list prayers where you tell God everything you want. It's fervent prayer. The Bible says in James 5, 16, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, 
And he goes on to say, Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain. It didn't rain for three and a half years. That's an effectual, fervent prayer. Uh, an effectual, fervent prayer is one uh, that is born uh, uh, in the gable end of a soul uh, uh, that is pleading for God uh, uh, to manifest himself in ways that nobody's ever seen. Uh, it is one that is uh, 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 truly uh, sold out in faith uh, and birth uh, uh, in order for the will of God to be performed. Uh, fervent prayer. One writer said this about fervent prayer. He said, any prayer for revival which does not have for its motive the glory of God and only the glory of God is prayer that asks amiss. Our prayer, and I've said this in years gone by, our prayer shouldn't be for sinners to get saved because we want to see them get saved. Our prayer ought to be that sinners get saved because every day they live as a lost person, uh, they are dishonoring God, uh, and we want them to get saved so they can bring glory to God, uh, so they can be a testimony of God's great grace. Uh, uh, that's why we ought to desire to see them saved. Uh, uh, any prayer for revival that is not centered around that God be glorified, it's just sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Another writer said this, Roswald Chambers said, The prayer of the feeblest saint on earth who lives in the Spirit and keeps right with God is a terror to Satan. The very powers of darkness are paralyzed by prayer. No spiritualistic seance can succeed in the presence of a humble praying saint. No wonder Satan tries to keep our minds fussy in active work till we cannot think in prayer. If we're going to have true revival, it's going to take fervent prayer. I was going to announce this later. Might as well go ahead and announce it. We're going to be praying again Saturday night, 7.30, weather permitting at the rock altar. If it's nasty outside, we'll pray in here. But we need to pray. Somebody needs to grab the horns of the altar and not let go till they get an answer from God. It's going to take fervent prayer to see true revival. Boy, we had a taste of it last week. I appreciate an appetizer, but I like the whole, the whole meal. I mean, I like the main course. I like the dessert. Hmm? I like it all. I want all that God can give us. We ought to not be satisfied with anything less. It's going to take fervent prayer to have true revival. It's going to take fiery passion to have true revival. Uh, this dragging in late ain't going to bring revival. Uh, a fiery passion is folks that show up early and they stay late. They just can't get enough. They just don't want to leave the house of God. And when they're away from the house of God, all they talk about is the house of God. Everybody around them, they're telling them about how good Jesus is. A fiery passion. And one writer said, the Bible indicates that we overcome the world by passion. The passion of an intense and all-consuming love for God. Uh, 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 another writer wrote, Religion produces a passion for souls. The Holy Spirit produces a passion for Christ. Hmm. How come though, when there are things we love, we can't help but talk about them? But one thing you have a struggle talking about is Christ. You'll talk about sports, you'll talk about the weather, you'll talk about riots, you'll talk about uh, what's going on on the job, you'll talk about the neighbors, you'll talk about everything but Christ. You know why? Because you don't have a passion for him. If we're going to have true revival, there's got to be a fiery passion. Well, you can't wait to get back and see what he's going to do next. And until you get back, all you're going to do is talk about, boy, I hope Jesus shows up tonight. Hmm? I wonder what kind of services we had if we got here early and all we talked about is how good Jesus is. Hmm? You see, you can't legislate spirituality or I'd make a rule around here. You can't talk about anything but Jesus when you're in the building. That'd be broken real quick. Hmm? You know why we, we don't talk about him when we're here? Because he's not burning in our heart. As great as he was last week, some of you already got over it. Mm. 
not tied them about your head and pray. We ain't there yet. Talk about how to have true revival. Hmm? Got to have fervent prayer. It takes fiery passion. True revival it takes being a being faithfully patient. We don't like that. We want him to answer in a week. Amen. I told Brother Greg last week. I said it'd take a week to get the bark off, maybe two or three weeks to get the bark off people. They are so full of the world. Their minds and their lives are saturated with what's going on in the world that it'll take more than a week to just get them ready to be able to hear from heaven. Amen. Jonathan Edwards, anybody ever hear of him? Preached one of the greatest messages ever preached, a sinner in the hands of an angry God. The night he preached that, he just read it off of a paper by candlelight. And hundreds got born again. And the news of that message went around the world, and thousands upon thousands have come to Christ. But what you don't hear is that he'd been faithfully preaching and praying for revival for 10 months before that event happened. We've got to be faithfully patient. Wonderful to see those precious souls saved. But can I help you? Those souls didn't get saved just because of revival last week. I've seen Kinsey get under conviction when Brother Jeffrey was here back in January. Six months she dealt with conviction. Knowing deep down inside she needed to be saved. But last week, the Lord called her name. Uh, Xander's been dealing for months with knowing he needed to be saved. Hmm? Little Joseph on his ornament said, pray for me, I need to be saved back at Christmas time. Are you listening? Hmm? I know Ashton had talked with his mom and his sister several nights before he got saved. Hmm? Are you listening? Just didn't happen. Colton's been around it ever since he can, he can, he's known what life is about. But he's been hearing a lot about it. He saw Lexi get saved. Saw Aiden get saved. Huh? Monday night, after he raised his hand, he was lost. He's in the back, back there where Caitlin is. Man, he ran to the altar. He couldn't wait to get saved. They didn't get saved because of Monday night. They got saved because of Mamas and grandmas telling them about Jesus and living a life before them. They got saved because uh, uh, they hear about Jesus in Sunday school. They got saved uh, because they've heard about Jesus in master clubs. Uh, they got saved because uh, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they're hearing about Jesus. Uh, and Monday night, Jesus just got too big for them and they just gave in to him. Are you listening? We've got to be faithfully patient. Some got great prayers answered last week. But you might be sitting here saying, God didn't answer my prayer. Now don't let the devil beat you up. The devil will be telling, well, their prayer got answered because they're more spiritual than you. They live closer to God than you. God loves them more than he loves you. No, God's a working. See, he's in the shadows always, Brother Clint, working orchestrating, molding, shaping. Maybe your case is a little bit different. The Bible talks about a childlike faith. Amen. Joseph, how old are you, buddy? He's eight. He's eight and wild as a buck, but he hadn't seen a whole lot of this world. Maybe the one you're praying for is in their 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s. And they've had a whole lot of worldly influence and God's got to do a lot of stripping away to get them to where they'll have that childlike faith like he had. Got to be faithfully patient. Your friend Brother Stephen worked on you for two years. Two years. Got to be faithfully patient. God's working. You just got to wait on God to work. Don't lose faith. Don't give up. Don't quit praying. Don't listen to the sorry, no good, lying devil. 
You've got to be faithfully patient. And the Bible says, my dear friends, in Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, You've got to be faithfully patient. We look at a sunset, and the one last night was beautiful. And we think, wow, look what God did. But you know how many sunsets there have been since he created the sun in order to have the one we had last night? God never does anything in a hurry. He always does things right and well. Mm -mm. True revival takes forthcoming praise, heartfelt praise. Now listen, don't mean to be unkind, I'm just going to have a little teachable moment right here. If Jesus has ever done anything for you, he is worthy of your praise. If you're as lost as a goose, he's still worthy of your praise. Because he formed you in the womb. And he's been good to you. He's worthy of your praise. Hmm? And if he's ever answered a prayer, certainly you ought to be willing to tell he hears and answers prayer. Hmm? I don't know if I can find it in this new Bible. I just had a verse popping in my head. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to have a teachable moment here. Nobody wanted to sing. So you're going to pay for it now. I'm going to preach. First Corinthians 14. Look at verse 26. I want you to see this. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm or song, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretations, let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be uh, by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let another interpret it. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets or the preachers speak two or three, and let the others judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. Uh, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if uh, they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. He started off this uh, 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 chapter by saying that uh, if everybody preaches, if everybody sings, if everybody speaks in tongues and the, uh, uh, the he heathens that come by and don't know what's going on, they're taking you all mad. You're crazy. Now, he's saying that everybody can't testify and everybody can't sing a song and every preacher can't preach because it won't edify. You see, we can only absorb as much as our bodies are indoor. Right. And you sit in that pew for about four hours, you're going to be wore out. Sure. Let me just qualify this before I go on and say what I'm going to say. Now when he's talking about speaking in tongues there, he's talking about a language. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so if we had Brother Sammy Filbert here tonight, and Brother Sammy Filbert began to stand up and speak 
in French Creole, which is the natural language there on the island in St. Lucia, we wouldn't understand a bit of it until he said, Mon bien, we know that, what that means. We wouldn't understand it. So there'd have to be somebody who would interpret it into our language so we can understand. And he's saying, you don't have two or three folks speaking in a different language because it doesn't edify people. It confuses people. And God is not the author of confusion. Now listen. It's not the will of God for everybody to testify every night. Thank you, Brother James. Had one right in that, huh? Can I help you with something? It's never the will of God for you to testify twice in a service. I've never heard somebody say something and then a few minutes later think of something else and say something else and God be on the second time. Never in my 47 years of being saved. Never. So you're welcome. When you're speaking then, you're taking liberty and you are doing a disservice to the house of God. You're welcome. Mm. Can I help you with something? It's not the will of God for you to testify every night of revival meeting next week. Did you ever wonder why there's some people that, that have to speak up every time I ask for testimonies and there's some people who never speak up? Does that mean the people who never speak up aren't spiritual? No, it usually means the people who never speak up are more spiritual. They're just waiting for God to touch their heart. Now I'm going to say this, and this is going to come off mean and unkind, but it's true. So I'm going to say it to Brother Donald, so I don't even want to look at the rest of your faces. Listen, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. That's what Paul told us. You know what I've learned of the devil? He always, always, always will stir up weak-minded people. You know why some people got to testify every time that we ask for testimonies? They're weak-minded. And the devil says, oh, you ought to say something. Okay, I will. And so then they say something, and it kills the service. Because the Spirit of God's not in it. Hmm? You say, how do I know if the Spirit of God's in it or not? If you was here Friday night and heard Miss Noreen testify, you know the Spirit of God was in it. Huh? But if you're curling your hair, or popping gum, or, or, you know, bringing attention to yourself, the Spirit of God's not in it. Just like our prayer ought to be for God's glory, so should our testifying, so should our singing, so should everything, because everything is to be done in decent and in order. I preached a message years ago, asked Brother Randy for it, you have to dig it out, probably convert it to CD, but you need to hear it. Liberty is not a license. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And when God gets to moving around, and here you get giddy and you just want to do something. That don't mean God wants you to do something. Hmm? Do you understand the men we had here last week, every one of them are great preachers? And on any given night, all three of them, all, or four of them, however many we had in the church, I don't even remember, could have preached and it would have all been great. But it wasn't the will of God for every one of them to preach every night and there were some nights it wasn't the will of God for anybody to preach. Hmm? Can I help you with something? The ones that are coming is not the second team. Hmm? But the ones coming, like the ones that have been here, know whoever the mantle falls on, that's who's going to preach. It's not about the preacher. It's about Jesus. I'm trying to help you all with something. Forthcoming praise comes from the heart, but it was put there from the heart of God. And if you don't know whether or not it's God telling you to speak or not, don't. God always makes his way clear. Again, I hate to pick on Miss Noreen, but I'm going to because she's sitting there looking very nice tonight. Miss Noreen, Friday night, you couldn't have left here and not did what God told you to do. You was about ready to explode. That's what happens when God gets in you. It's a volcano that's about to erupt from your soul. Hmm? You say, well, I don't feel that way. Then sit there and be quiet. Let me address something else Paul mentioned there, that w women were to be silent in the church. 
He also wrote that women are not to usurp authority over the man. I'm not a chauvinist. I'm a Bible believer. You don't like it? Take it up with God. But nowhere has God ever permitted a woman to preach or teach when men are sitting in the sanctuary. You're welcome. And when Paul said for them to be silent in the church, he's dealing with usurping authority over the man. Now, I know some Pharisees that take that all the way where women can't even smile in church because I've seen their wives. They've never smiled. Trust me. How in the world could I give my wife's testimony? Now, I've seen some things God's done for her, but I don't know what God's done for her. That's what God did for her. He's not talking about testifying. He's not talking about women singing. He's talking about her teaching or preaching or usurping authority over the man. Hmm? You're welcome. Well, there was nowhere in my notes. I'll show you my notes afterwards. But you needed to hear that. Because some of you are going to testify or die if I call for testimonies. So next week, don't get upset if I call you down if it's not the will of God for you to testify. Why? Because I'm serious about revival. And by the way, in case you don't know, go down there and look at my office, and on the door it does say pastor. Hmm? You know what Brother Greg said when he came to town? Brother Greg's been pastoring longer than I have. He said, you're the pastor. Whatever you say goes. You know what Brother Bobby said when he came to town? You're the pastor. Whatever you say goes. You know what Brother J.D. said? You're the pastor. Are you listening? I try my best to be able to discern the mind of God because I don't want to miss God. And on this next week, I'm not going to let you disrupt the service. So I don't like it. Well, you don't have to come. We're going to have revival, though. I'm talking about heartfelt praise. The psalmist said in Psalm 49, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and His praise in the congregation of the saints. Uh, Psalm 156, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise you the Lord. Say, preacher, I thought uh, you said we all couldn't praise the Lord. Not in the sanctuary, but you can't outside these doors. Go out there and praise the Lord. Let them know what God's done for you. Hmm? Well, the last point, since some of you have already checked out. Aaron Ellis. Look at him, he's as red as a shirt. No, he wasn't checked out. Some of you is about to pass out, so I had to say something that would get your attention off of you fainting in the midst of the pew back there. It wasn't that funny, Shoeless. <laughs> what is it going to take to bring revival? It's going to take fervent prayer. It's going to take fiery passion. It's going to take being faithfully patient. It's going to take forthcoming praise. But here's the difficult one, and some of you are feeling it right now. It's going to take fighting pride. The Bible says in Psalms 10, 4, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not at all in his thoughts. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Proverbs eleven two. 2, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. We need to be pliable, not prideful. We need to be submissive, not stubborn. We need to be broken, not boastful. Now, I asked a question early on. Who want a revival? You all raised your hands. I'm going to ask another question. Will we have revival? Will we have it? So, well, we've got, we got a preacher's coming. Well, I didn't say, will we have a meeting? Will we have revival? Well, that'll be determined between how you conduct yourself between now and Sunday. 
if you start putting into practice these things. I said years ago, we'd have revival if we'd fall in love with Jesus all over again. We'd have revival if we'd truly pray from our heart, God. We want revival because we're tired of seeing your name blasphemed. I don't know about you. I, I talk to him and I, I'm tired and of all the feel-good churches and how they dishonor him. I'm so glad Crossroads Vineyard and all of them's closed down. It tickles me to death. Huh? You say, that's cruel, preacher. No, what they are doing is misleading people. And they are dishonoring God. They're making a circus out of what is holy. And that upsets me. And I know it upsets Almighty God. We ought to certainly pray that God would be so real around here that he'd be honored the way he deserves to be honored. Amen. Now listen to me. And say all that I said for you to sit on your heels next week not testify. If God tells you to testify, you testify. I didn't tell you what I had to say so you wouldn't sing for the glory of Jesus. You sing, you sing for the glory of Jesus. Hmm? I didn't tell you what I said, so you just sit on your hands. No, you shout it out. You, you let the Spirit of God flow through you, and you get everything you can from God. But you fight every tendency that will rob God of any glory. That's what it's all about. Seeing Him. High and lifted up. So again, Will you have revival? I would to God we would. I'm a longing to. I'm a hungering for it. We're a good candidate for it. But we won't have it just being satisfied with what we saw last week. Price was paid for last week. A passion was developed. That's why we had last week. Sitting at home for four weeks, there was a passion developed. We need to go the next step. Ice cream's a whole lot better with chocolate syrup on it. So why be satisfied for ice cream? Let's let him pour a little extra on it. Hmm? Just get all he's got. But it comes with being sensitive and having a burden to see him high and lifted up. A burden for him to sit down right next to you and you know it. You see, Miss Lisa, when he really shows up, I mean really shows up, you get to a point where you're afraid to breathe because you're afraid it may offend him and he'll leave. When he really shows up, you're afraid to look up. Go read John, what he had to say in Revelation chapter 1. He said, I fell at his feet as a dead man. Hmm? When he really shows up, you don't have to tell anybody he's here. And when he really shows up, it creates such an atmosphere of desire in your heart that you can't wait to see him again. Yeah. So will we have revival? Well, we'll see. But it starts right now. Yeah. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. When he's speaking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for those promises that you gave to your people. Lord, the Old Testament was written for our ensample. We can glean how you brought back Israel from bondage. And God, how you led them out of captivity and how you sustained her. And how you did build that city and how the heathen did take note of what you've done for them. And God, we can look and see how we have been strapped spiritually for years. 
The Lord, last week was just a wonderful refreshing. But Lord, we want revival. We want the heathen to know and see the blessings of God on his people. Now, Father, I pray you'd be glorified in everything that's said and done. God, protect our minds, our hearts, our thought process, our steps. May the next few days we be so enthralled with you that, Lord, we don't even care what's going on in this world. And God, may it certainly play out when the meeting starts by you showing up and the reverence, the fear of the Lord set in on each and every heart. Help us not to say or do anything that brings glory to flesh. Help everything to be said and done to glorify Thee. Thank You for the blood You shed on Calvary. Thank You for Your church. Thank You for the privilege we have of the hope of revival. Many churches are assembled and do not have that hope. Now, Father, bless bless in this invitation. Break our hearts for righteousness. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.